Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Today I'd like to do a little uh, something on Fourier series. Um, this was something that kind of plagued me for a while. I really wasn't sure why you could represent a function f of x um, like this. That is, it, f of x would be equal to some constant that we call a sub zero plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of some constant a sub n times cosine nx plus some other constant b sub n times sine nx. I kind of got it, you know, this is tech, this a sub zero is usually like the, they can this is the average of your function f of x. And then this is the, um, you know, an infinite sum of um, cosine terms and sine terms, which supposedly um, over a certain interval, in our case, we're going to be using negative pi to pi, will converge to f of x. Um, but I really, I couldn't find a good reason for why this is true on the internet, so I had, I had to come up, I basically, I kind of had to figure out a way that was acceptable to me for myself. A lot of the explanations assume that you know certain things and certain terminology. Um, so I'm going to try to make it as basic as possible. Now, obviously, it's not going to be that basic. We're talking about Fourier series. So um, anyway, let's just get into it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to integrate both sides of that equation um, from negative pi to pi. And you're allowed to do that. I mean, it's an equality, and if you do the same thing to an, on both sides of inequality, you still have an equality. So that's what we do. As you can see, I just integrated both sides of this equation right here from negative pi to pi with respect to x. And of course, I'm allowed to bring the, um, the integral inside uh, the sum, and this is technically two separate sums, so we just end up with this. No big deal there integrated both sides from negative pi to pi with respect to x. All right, so now let's um, consider something for all positive integers n. For all positive integers n, it is true that the integral from negative pi to pi of sine of nx dx, as well as the integral from negative pi to pi of cosine nx dx, will evaluate to zero. Okay, that's true for all positive integers n. All right, so as you can see, that's going to make this entire sum right here cancel out, which is nice. And our, our goal, our point of doing this step is to isolate a sub zero, to get a good, um, a good uh, to get the value of a sub zero. So with that cancellation, we get that the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x dx is just equal to a sub zero times the integral from negative pi to pi of dx. And that's going to give you a sub zero being equal to one over two pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x dx. So that's how we can find our constant a sub zero. All right, moving on. Let's just I'm just going to, I just copy and pasted the, the exact same thing that we started with because we're going to perform a different set of manipulations now to find our a sub n. All right, so the, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of that equation by cosine kx and then integrate from negative pi to pi. And of course, again, we're allowed to do that because as long as we do the exact same thing to both sides of an equation, the equation still holds. Okay, so we have this. All right, and as you can see, um, we already know that this integral right here, th this whole thing right here is just going to be zero because we have negative pi to pi of some constant times cosine kx, um, and that, that's going to about that will evaluate to zero. So this drops out and we're just left with this. All right, so for all positive integers n and k, some nice things are true. The integral from negative pi to pi of cosine nx times cosine kx dx is equal to pi, um, as long as n is equal to k. 
So that's true. If n equals k in this integral right here, the integral will evaluate to pi as long as n and k are positive integers. Now, this entire thing, this integral will evaluate to zero for all other cases. In other words, when n is not equal to k. So when you see this, it's either going to be pi or zero, depending on the relationship between n and k. Okay. Um, and also, this is true um, for all positive integers n and k. And I, I, in fact, I think this is for all real numbers that this integral goes to zero. Uh, don't don't quote me on that. Definitely for positive integers n and k, um, this integral goes to zero, and that's nice because that's exactly what we have here. So this term is going to drop out. All right, so now we have this. Um, we have integral from negative pi to pi of f of x cosine kx dx is just equal to this sum. Now, this is the tricky part. This is kind of the part that got me a little bit confused. So instead of um, assuming... Um, a bunch of prior knowledge, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate that sum on the right term by term, and it'll help make things a little bit clearer. So if you can read that, hopefully you can. Um, this sum uh, evaluates to the following. It's just, it's just a bunch of things added together. Our first term in this series is a sub 1, times the integral from negative pi to pi of cosine of 1x times cosine kx dx. Our second term is a sub 2 times cosine 2x cosine kx integrated from negative pi to pi dx. And that goes on and on and on until, until we get to some a, um, our kth term, which is going to be a sub k, of course, times um, the integral from negative pi to pi of cosine kx times cosine kx dx. And then we'll have the rest of the terms that will follow this pattern right here. All right, now let's notice something about that. As you can see, for every, ter every term will evaluate to zero except for that one right there. This one, this integral right here, remember we established this previously, this is going to evaluate to pi for all integers k. And every single one of these is going to evaluate to zero. Because don't forget, we already stated that. Um, if, if we have an integral in this form where n is not equal to k, it evaluates to zero. And this is in that form, and our n, in this case 1, is not equal to k, therefore it evaluates to zero. Similarly for this one, this is the only term that's going to remain. And that term is just going to be a sub k times pi. So literally, this is what we have. We have that the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x cosine kx dx is just equal to pi times uh, pi a sub k. That's all it is, because this is equal to this, and this thing, term by term, evaluates to nothing but pi times a sub k. So we have this equality right here. Well, we started with a sub n's. We started with everything in terms of n, but I mean, that's no problem though, because we can just, if it's true that, if, if this is true, then we just replace our k with an n, and it would be true that the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x cosine nx dx is simply pi times a sub n. In other words, that simplifies to a sub n equaling 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x times cosine nx dx. All right, so now we found our a sub n. So we found two of our constants. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire process of following uh, of, of finding b sub n. You use a very similar process. It's almost identical. Um, and you can find that b sub n is going to be equal to 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x times sine of nx dx. And this is going to be a constant. 
I mean, well, it's going to be a constant. It's going to be well, it's going to be a function of n, but yeah, it, it's going to be basically it's going to be a function of n. All right. So we have our a sub zero, we have our a sub n, and we have our b sub n. So putting it all together, substituting those values, we get that um, any function f of x can be represented by this. It will be equ exactly equivalent to this on a certain interval. Now, you'd have to do some interval, uh, like, you know, convergence tests to find um, what values of x this converges for. Um, if you do that, you will find that this is going to converge from negative pi to pi. Um, so any function f of x, any one you want, any function f of x on the interval from negative pi to pi can be perfectly represented by this right here. And I really wanted to do that because that's going to help us um, in later videos come up with some really nice values for some kind of, well, some infinite sums that we wouldn't be able to really evaluate otherwise. So again, this is, this is Fourier series, um, or at least it's a, it's part of it, but uh, all I wanted to do in this video was get this equality right here. Because um, we're going to be using that in future videos coming up to find some really nice values for some tricky infinite sums. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time.